The Thorian is one of the coolest moments in all of Mass Effect, something not uncommon for the first game. The creature is originally found near the Exogeny headquarters on Pharos, a planet you travel to in the first game in order to check out a Geth invasion that is happening there. After fighting through hordes of turn colonists that have mutated into some sort of zombie creature, you eventually find your way to the culprit, a massive space alien referred to as the Thorian. You learn that the Thorian has actually existed for an unimaginable amount of time, even before the Protheans, and that it holds the key known as a cipher to understand the Prothean beacon you unlocked earlier in the game. This is because the Thorian devours and obtains knowledge from its victims, as well as controlling them completely. And by devouring Protheans tens of thousands of years ago, it gained the same abilities that the Protheans once had. It's a cool concept on paper, but the craziest part about all of this is that we never see the Thorian again. We simply leave Pharos with our newfound knowledge, and for the rest of the series, that is the last we ever see of the Thorian at all. This is especially interesting because not only does this Thorian seem to have some sort of indoctrination ability, akin to the Reapers and Leviathans, but it also starts to make us ask questions like how did the Thorian survive so many Reaper cycles and invasions? It's obviously a highly intelligent organic being, so shouldn't it already be wiped out? The only other major species we know of that survived this long is the Leviathans, but at least from them we get some answers in the Mass Effect 3 DLC. For the Thorian, we never get anything. Which makes this mystery all the more interesting, because even from just the short moment we have with this being in the first game, it's quite obvious that the Thorian is one of the most powerful creatures in all of Mass Effect, and that it may be hiding some very dark and sinister secrets that could further shed light on what is really happening in the Milky Way all this time. One of the coolest features of every Mass Effect game is the galaxy map. It allows players to not only traverse their way to new systems and planets, but also to simply read up on a lot of lore on the places we get to go. Most of the time this lore is pretty basic and uneventful filler that tells some basic background story of what's happening on this planet. But two specific planets in the series have a much more interesting background. The first one's from Mass Effect 3, called Ploba. Scans reveal that there is a baffling amount of strange and giant megastructures on the surface that are too regular in pattern to be explained away as standard geography. Many scientists have suggested that Ploba may in fact be a planet-sized supercomputer being housed in these megastructures, or a reaper hiding ground used to indoctrinate nearby species. Either way, we may never know. The next planet is Logan, from Mass Effect 1. Similar to Ploba, this gas giant was surveyed by scientist teams and it was discovered that several large and distinct objects were on the surface of the planet. However, even more horrifying in this case, the objects always immediately disappeared out of thin air when observed, and no answers or ideas have yet been brought forth as to what has happened with this phenomenon. Similar to the Ralloway, the virtual aliens are another species that we only hear very briefly about in Mass Effect 3, but this time they have an even more horrifying and interesting backstory that is quite unique to the Mass Effect universe. You see, the virtual aliens, whose name we still do not know, hail from an unknown planet, either near the edge of the Milky Way or just outside of it, and they were facing a mass extinction event. The virtual alien's nearby sun was close to going supernova, and in order to preserve themselves and their future, they created a hyper-advanced and massive spaceship, where over 1 billion individuals uploaded their consciousness on board in order to preserve resources and ensure survival. The ship was controlled by artificial intelligence that eventually drove this massive freighter into Solarian space, where first contact was made. The Council swiftly decided to help the virtual aliens, whose ship was running low on power and they were on the verge of extinction because of it. To do so, 400 volunteers from Citadel Space were sent to the ship where they swapped their bodies to join into the Matrix-like computer simulation that all the virtual aliens were currently living in. In exchange, one virtual alien was able to take over every body for each of the hosts in the universe in order to communicate with the Council. 
The aliens express their desire to come back to the real world, but that is really where the story stops. And as to what lies in the future for the virtual aliens, we don't know. What we do know though, is that this is an amazing idea for a potential Mass Effect sequel, and meeting virtual aliens who have taken over host bodies after living in a simulation for their entire lives is the kind of story that we get so excited about in this universe. More than most things on this list, I really want to see where this story goes and I hope it gets expanded on in the future. The Keepers are one of the most mysterious beings that we meet in our entire time in the Mass Effect games. They're the strange little guys on the Citadel that keep it pristine and in good condition. And as we learn at the end of Mass Effect 1, they are also the ones who activate the Citadel Mass Relay to try and let the Reapers into Council space. In multiple games, we are also able to try and study the Keepers more, but find no answers. They are harboring a peculiar genetic makeup and seem not to respond in any way to others on the Citadel, simply working on tasks that sometimes seem unclear. One of the most damning scenes in the original trilogy, though, is actually something we see in the Shadow Broker DLC for Mass Effect 2. You see, after defeating the Shadow Broker and instilling Liara with her new duties as the galaxy's most well-involved benefactor, you get the chance to look through some of the old files that the Shadow Broker had that were classified as top secret and have huge lore implications. Some of these show scenes of espionage early in the previous games or big reveals for certain characters. But the most peculiar videotape we see is nothing more than a keeper locked away in a small room. So what is this keeper on the videotape hiding? Where is this facility? And what exactly is going on here? It's the only one of the videotapes that needs more explanation than simply what we see on screen. You see, these files and tapes are only for the most important and top secret things throughout the galaxy, so there must be more going on here than meets the eye. But this is all we got, and because of that, the mystery begins to get even bigger. Are there people that have discovered the true nature of the Keepers? And if they have, what does it all mean? Elitania is a planet we travel to in Mass Effect 1 after getting the mission UNC Lost Module where Admiral Hackett informs us that an Alliance probe has gone missing on the planet's surface, and we need to retrieve its data core. It seems like a pretty routine mission, and for the most part, it is. You land on the planet, fight some bad guys, and get your data core. What some players may have missed, though, is that Elitania is actually hiding a lot more than meets the eye. You see, when you first land on the planet, you are able to see an anomaly marked on your minimap, which if tracked down, turns out to be a mysterious Prothean ruin, a large sphere suspended in air surrounded by a structure of some sort. And after approaching the object and decrypting it, we are met with this text. Raising a hairy fist, you shake your spear at it in anger and the creature rises up quickly until it disappears from view. With a satisfied grunt, you make your way back to your caves and the rest of your tribe. You fall into the familiar pattern of life, the hunt for food, the struggle to claim and keep a mate, the battles against other tribes that would claim your territory. Days roll into nights and back into days. Each time you rise from sleep, there is a sensation that you are not alone, that some other is with you, sharing all you see, hear, and feel. At these times, your hand goes to the strange lump on the back of your skull, and you remember the silver creature in the sky. The air grows colder, winter falls. You must range farther for food, clutching the furs tight against you to ward off the chill. It is on one of these long hunts that the strange bird returns. You hear it before you see it, its call a deafening roar as it descends from above, swooping down onto you. A single great eye opens on the underbelly, a glowing red orb. You try to run, but a finger of red light extends from the eye and engulfs you and all goes black again. You wake an instant later to find yourself on Elitania, lying on your back, the Prothean artifact looming above you undamaged and your companions standing over you. They help you to your feet, puzzled. There was a flash of light and you just sort of toppled over, one explains. Are you okay, Shepard? The other asks. You don't answer right away, wondering at the implications of what you have seen. 
the memories of a Cro-Magnon hunter captured by an implanted Prothean data recorder. How long did they study the primitive humans, observing them and analyzing the results at their base on Mars? And what, if anything, did they leave for us? The vision Shepard has shows that the Protheans were in fact watching us even as primates, and they were not destroyed in their cycle because we had not become sufficiently intelligent enough as a species. In fact, that red light seen in the vision may actually have been our first encounter with a Reaper ever, and foreshadows our doom later in the series before we even know what is going on. An awesome revelation that many fans of the series probably completely missed. 